In the last video, I covered how we could do this little camera reset thing, similar to the camera in Ocarina of Time. Today, I'm going to be showing how we can use the camera to lock on to an enemy and kind of simulate a battle-like condition. For this video, I'm going to be doing this in a separate scene because I feel like there are two things we need to cover. One which is the actual mechanism of how this lock-on works, and then in the next episode we'll cover how to tie it all together. So I'll get out a puppet just like before, and I'll get out a block here which I will make red so that it is clear that it is evil and needs to be banished, and it is a threat to our existence. Just for simplicity's sake, in this enemy, I'm going to add a tag, which I'll label enemy, and I'm going to place this in the center of the block. We'll have to take in more considerations as we add more enemies, which I'll cover in the next episode, but for this one, we're just going to have one. And again, just for simplicity's sake, this is not a best practice, but for demonstration purposes, this is fine. I'm going to take the position and pass it through a wireless transmitter, which I'll label enemy position like so. Now out here, I'll have the player, which I will place a tag onto and call the tag player, and I'll just place it here at the center of the feet. And again, not best practice, but for demonstration purposes, I will also send this through a wireless transmitter, which I will call player position. In the Ocarina of Time, when you're in combat and locked onto an enemy, the camera follows both you and the player. So how do we get that to happen? Essentially what we want to do is we want to take both the points, the player's position and the enemy position, and we're going to create a midpoint. I know that may bring back fears or stress from math class back in middle school or high school, but don't worry, this is very simple. I'm going to just take both of these and make sure that they are scene-wide. One will receive the enemy position and the other will receive the player position. And to get the midpoint between the two, all we have to do is add these two together. Since we're using fat wires, we only have to use one set of calculators for this. So we add them together and we divide by 2 and that gives us the midpoint between the two. So if I were to take a follower, I could set the strength and the damping all the way up and plug this midpoint into the target position. And if I start time we can see it goes exactly between the player and the enemy. If I start time we can see that the block stays between us and the enemy the entire time. Now I'll just take a tag and I'll place this on this midpoint block and I'll place it right on the top of the block like this and I've labeled this camera lock on position so now we can close this and make this both invisible and collidable, not collidable, excuse me. Now if we get one more block out and use this as a camera now we can set up a camera rig extremely fast. I'll go ahead and place a camera. I will get two followers just like before and I'll get a look at rotator just like before. The look at rotator we want to make sure is aiming in the correct direction and we'll have this look at that camera lock on position. I'll also turn up the strength here just so this is fast to look at and now I will stay upright. And so just like before we'll have one that follows and one that flees. So the one that flees will flee from the camera lock on position between the values of three or zero and three. And the one that follows will follow that camera lock on position from 3.1 to 100. And I'll go ahead and turn the strength in both of these down on the y-axis. Just to keep this from looking jerky, I'm going to turn down the strength on both of these so that it feels a little smoother. Okay. Now if we turn this off, 
and start time, we can see that the camera follows on that midpoint between the player and the enemy, which keeps both of them on screen at the same time. To make the lock on a little bit more convincing, if we had a look at rotator on this player, point in the correct direction, we can have this look at the enemy and on this camera, if we turn the black bars on, now we can see how familiar this looks. Our player is locked on to the enemy, and the camera follows both of us, sort of. It follows the midpoint between the two, which kind of keeps them both in frame, and I think signals that we're in combat. This looks and feels very familiar to me. I played a lot of Ocarina of Time growing up. And that's it for the lock-on position. This is exactly how the lock-on logic works. So in the next video, I'll be taking all of this and adding it on top of our previous video's camera logic setup, right, with the state and all that, because we have a little bit more considerations to take into play, especially if we have multiple enemies and there's a couple different that we want to be able to toggle between enemies while we're locked on. So all of that will be covered in the next episode. So I hope this is helpful. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Share it with your friends if they're having troubles with this. If you're new around here and you want to see more tutorials, please click subscribe because i got a lot of cool stuff coming out, including the rest of this series and a bunch of other things. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying safe. I'll see you in the next video.